Hey YouTube, I'm Bob from the game Brucal, and in this video I'm going to look into how to deal with light bleeding in Unreal Engine 4. So Epic has this really nice guide online actually called, um, what's it called again, Troubleshooting, Lighting Troubleshooting Guide. Um, and in that guide they talk about shadow bleed or incorrect shadow quality. And that's pretty much what we are seeing here. So. Um, this is the static mesh from the interior of the blue of the Brugel house and as you can see here There's not supposed to be a light like this coming through the wall. So uh, how do we deal with that? Um, well Let's have a look. So in the troubleshooting guide they're talking about a whole bunch of different settings the first one being the cascaded um, shadow maps of your directional sunlight um, and just to make clear, it is definitely the sunlight that is causing that issue, okay? So, um, you can adjust the dynamic shadow distance. If you put it at zero, um, there will not really be any shadow distance. Um, the default value of 20,000 kind of works well for us. I put it at 5,000 and then already a lot of the lighting issues get a little smaller. So, that's one thing that you can adjust. Um, then next up we have the dynamic shadow cascades and um, we actually have a really good picture in the, in the guide so I'll just pull that up. Um, you have you can set it between 0 and 4. If you set it at 0 you have no set shadows. If you set it at 1 you have pretty lousy shadows and at 4 you get really sharp um, tight shadows. So that's something that you can do as well and that's something we're gonna do here. So you put it at 4 and you see there's a little bit of an adjustment there. So outside my light still looks pretty normal there's very little ambient light um, normally you, you know the shadows are really black if you want to change really black shadows all you got to do is uh, set your skylight uh, let's see my sky it's set at 0 0.01 um, if i give it a little bit more light at one see my shadows become a lot less dark so that's really easy to do but for the sake of this video i'm going to keep my shadows really dark so they're very easy to see um all right so still some bleeding issues, but they are not as bad as they used to be. Um, so back to the directional light, so the sunlight that we're using here. Um, back to the cascaded shadow maps. So another setting that you can play around with is the distribution exponent. Um, and as you can see, it impacts things a bit. Um, this is really some fine tuning and I can get rid of those lights on the door by just increasing it slightly. We have we, we still need to work on the roughness here. This has not as much to do with the sunlight, I think. So now we've got this, but we still have this huge chunk of light coming through. Um, what are options? What other options do we have? Well, going back up to the directional sunlight. Um, the transition is basically for how the shadows are drawn if you go further away. So it's not really an issue here. It will not really help us much. Um, and then the far shadow again is for far distance shadow so not really helpful um, in this case then we can go to the light settings of our sunlight um, and there are some things that we can change as well um, if you open it up a little further so it will look like this by default you click here you see the rest of the the properties and there they have the shadow bias which will uh, influence the accuracy of how the shadows are drawn as well and as you can see you can adjust it a little bit as well now there will be artifacts if you put it too low so 0 0.5 is actually fine with me um, then you can decide how sharp your shadows are gonna be as you can see they're already pretty sharp but you could sharpen them up if you think that's what you need I kind of like it this way <laughs> so that doesn't really help me much but you know, sharpening them up will obviously help with that thing coming through. Although, on the other hand, you might want to have lengthier light in other places. Um, and then there's the context shadow lane. Um, so I don't really know how that works. It says something about ray tracing um, and making sharp shadow contact. Zero disables it. So this is something I'd rather not use, but using it actually works really well for this case. It's like the exponent. It's something that you can mess around with a little bit. Um, if I put it at 0 0.1, my issues are almost entirely resolved. I do have this issue though. If I look at it from this angle, all of a sudden the light will return. It's still way better than its default setting, obviously, but um, you know, it's not really what I want. So no matter what I do, I 
can't seem to fix it with this mesh and one of the reasons for that is because it's just a very very thin mesh um, our 3d modeler is still working on it because the facade of the house is going to go up here and it's still a work in progress but you know for the sake of this tutorial it's actually really nice and it's really thin so um, i'm going to turn this off again so that you can see the entire thing and i put this little geometry object there so it's just a cube with 0 0.001 as it's uh, X value for thickness and as you can see it throws a shadow um, so if we bring that thing in we can actually fix our problem pretty easily so just having some additional thickness to your mesh will help with the cascading shadows as well and as you can see um, you know you can have well the thicker you make your walls obviously the better but it could be a pretty thin one and there will be nothing no issues whatsoever so there you go because that's basically everything there is to it and using these techniques you can clear up any shadow issues that you have um, i would argue so hopefully this helps you in some way bye bye